What's going on, everybody? In today's episode, we're going to break down the rest of the matchups, hit that news, talk a little bit about Josh Gordon and where he could possibly end up, as well as the in and outs, and then we wrap it all up with our Ballers on a Budget pick. Don't miss it. Hey, this is Kenyon Drake. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. It's Christmas time. Hey, yeah. Hey. Ho, ho. It's Christmas time. That's right, everybody. Deal with it. Mike. Feels like it's his social obligation, societal obligation to yeah. usher in the Christmas spirit. That's right. This the November first. Mr. Fall. I like Thanksgiving. Get out my face. Mike is Christmas very time. passionate about this. I can't stand too much <laughs> Christmas music. <laughs> Not uh, us. I believe some very illustrious uh collegiate uh groups have done some studies recently of course they have that's that, what they do uh yeah well funded studies into the impact of early christmas decorating mm -hmm. and there's a lot of shame that goes out there i mean if it, if you haven't had your turkey you don't decorate right you know right, right. and sometimes thanksgiving falls very late and that's just well that's just the way it is yeah but these studies have proven that people that decorate earlier are happier human beings. I don't like joy. <laughs> Get out of my face with your happiness. So I'm just I'm just spreading the word. You want to be happier? I just want everything beige. <laughs> and we beige look, foods, beige decorations. The retail stores have been way ahead of this for a long time. Yeah, I mean, and they're happy about it. Before Halloween, <laughs> they make money. Wait, was the collegiate study about businesses that the earlier they decorate, the happier they are? That probably holds true too. This was this was a very important study. Ex there, are, there are experts in this area of Christmas decorations, and Mike is one of them. That's right. It improves your mood. Now, brought to you by S. Claus. <laughs> yes, funded, funded by S. Yes. Claus. Hey, look. Welcome in. We've got Foot Clan Friday today. News, some in and out. The rest of the fantasy forecast. Ballers on a budget. Some reaction to last night's game. Uh, you were trick or treating, perhaps. Uh, you got treat if you played Jimmy Garoppolo, Emmanuel Sanders, Kenyon Drake. Pretty I, much anybody you were afraid to play. Yeah, I think most people got tricked. Most people last night got tricked. They didn't get the treats. I mean the. The person I, I feel like the mo most common played was Kenyon Drake, as far as you know the 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 players that you were in a situation that dictated you had to do that, right? Kyler Murray, Jimmy Garoppolo, it, it looked like there might have been better options out there. Whereas at running back, if you had paid up for Drake and got him, you were kind of forced to start him. Well, fantastic! Yeah, because congratulations for that courage. I could not have done it, but that was an outrageous performance. That. A player who just joined the team, what it was, two or three days ago, comes in and just looked awesome. And Mike Mike Clay came out and said, "Look, you know, trust the process on these decisions. Sometimes you get them wrong." Three days with the Cardinals, Cardinals were an offense in the bottom ten in touchdowns. Nobody knew what his role was going to be, and then playing an elite D that has shut down running backs for eight consecutive weeks. And Kenyon Drake goes out there and was dynamic. I said before the show today, he reminds me a lot of what Tevin Coleman represents to the 49er offense, which if you played Tevin Coleman, you were super disappointed because Jimmy G took all the touchdowns and then Matt Breida had the better game on the ground. Yeah. I, but uh, I, credit to Kenyon Drake. I mean, when he has been given significant work in an offense, he has always 100% of the time put up 20 plus fantasy point uh, big time weeks it's just barely ever happened because he's a great running back i mean this is i feel like a victory lap situation here even though i you know i wasn't I'll telling allow any, it yeah i wasn't telling people to start him this week but i've been telling people since he was drafted he's great and he's been behind basically a b-hole and then a tanking team and now you actually put him with an offensive mind and say well what can you do oh you're you're pretty good i would just be careful of the lap because or maybe you take it because you got one week to take that's it. why i'm taking it now because i don't 
Look, David Johnson is the leading, uh, you know, Arizona Cardinal running back. Uh, th this is not a situation. Now, maybe next week, I don't expect to have, you know, next week, Chase Edmonds well, is got, not going to be playing. You got 10 more days, though. I mean, obviously, they got quite a while before. DJ might be back. A another very difficult matchup. So, yeah, I'm taking my victory lap now just based on the talent. What a game. What a game. Cardinals almost came back. I think surprised a lot of people. Andy Isabella made a surprise appearance. Oh, there he is. Emmanuel Sanders looked great. Looked like the only slash go-to receiver in this offense. The one time, And Jimmy Garoppolo just played well. The timing route, which is all – I mean, this is also baffling from Emmanuel Sanders. There was one where he was – he ran up the middle of the field and then had a hard cut out, and the ball was just right there. I mean, they, they – yes, they highlighted it in the, in the broadcast, but they were 100% right, like – that's the type of catch that takes a quarterback and a, and a receiver years to develop, and it was just perfected in two weeks well, by Garoppolo and Sanders. Well, part of the reason they specifically went after Sanders is because the the Denver OC Rich Scangarello. Yeah, he knew was, he already knew the offense. Yes. He he's implementing basically the offense he was with the Niners last year. So he you know when you when he when Emmanuel Sanders was asked, he's like, this is pretty much the exact same offense. Yeah, he looked great. And it was a it was a fun game. If you got to see some of it, I don't know if you were out there trick or treating what you were doing. Uh, I got to see the majority of this game, and it, it was it was pretty fun. Uh, pro pro tip for next year: I was trick or treating. I had, uh, I had my AirPods in. I had AirPods don't in, tell my family. and my phone in my pocket. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to say dress up as RoboCop, but like the inside of the oh, visor oh, is the is the phone. <laughs> you just keep running into everything. Yeah, I'm. That would be unbelievable. Yeah, Mike's thinking he's already playing. No, I'm I'm the kid from Ready Player One. Oh, okay. You've got the I'm mask gonna on. I'm going to be out there in an Oculus. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Either that or you dress up as a mummy and get a stand-in to walk around with your family. I mean, that's oh, the other option, too. Right. There's so many ways to watch football on Halloween. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. All right. Let's get into it. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right, today's winner is Luke Lang. Luke Lang wins a $55 gift card to shopballers.com. We appreciate each and every one of the Foot Clan supporters over at jointhefoot.com. Congratulations, Luke. You're the Foot Clan Friday winner. You can find us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers on Instagram, instagram.com slash fantasyfootballers. Had a lot of fun yesterday with all the Halloween garb. It was well-received. Yeah, People I'd, enjoyed it. Great job, everybody. We really did it. We really killed now, it. Everybody's yeah. the three of us? Now yeah. you, yes. Oh, man. Great job, everybody. Yes. Did Jason uh, was the sweatiest man. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. I know this doesn't make sense, but it wasn't sweat. When I pulled the mask off and liquid poured out, I am telling you, those were tears. The whole episode, for one hour, I was crying into a the, – there was like a little pocket that was pooling up. I was crying – <laughs> the whole episode, real tears into that mask. And when I pulled that thing off, just a pool of tears. It was just so tight that it pressed on your tear ducts yes. and just spilled out for an hour? 100%. There was some sweat in there, too. Well, you know, I'm pretty sweaty. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. We haven't had the opportunity to talk about this yet. The Patriots have waived Josh Gordon. So Josh Gordon is now going through waivers. Yeah, he will not be a free agent where he can just uh, decide, I want to go to whatever team. You know, Buffalo could really use him once a deep threat to compete with New England. They, they can't sign him. Their, their record is good. So he's going to go to whatever team claims him first in order of bad records to good records. Obviously, a lot of teams out there like the Dolphins, they have no reason to do this. Um, I think when you start looking through the records, you get to the Giants, you get to the Cardinals, people hoping he goes to the Eagles. I doubt he gets there. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see, but he's he's only going to cost a million dollars for the rest of the season. Then he is a free agent. Just a million. Just right, a million right, yeah. dollars. Yeah, super cheap. The, the reality, the only thing I want to throw out there is, you know, value-wise, he has an uphill battle to me because of the waiver system. You're going to go to a team – Literally in order of, of worst to, fir uh, to first. So you're going to go to a team that may not have a great quarterback situation, may not have a great offensive situation, and then you've got to acclimate. 
and then you've got to usurp or be uh, involved uh, compared to the other wide receivers. So Josh Gordon shouldn't, shouldn't be sitting on your waiver wire in fantasy leagues, but temper your expectations. That's my opinion. I know you guys are more optimistic, but uh, no, I don't I, think Josh Gordon's going to do much of anything the rest of the year. I, I think you, you bring a, a really valid point. You have to temper your expectations. He's not just, oh, he's great, now he's going to go somewhere – you know, the, the Bengals pick him up and he's going to be a superstar with Ryan Finley. No, it's it, that wouldn't make sense. But when you look at your – like I just pulled up our waivers in our league sure. of record because I wanted to say, would I pick him up? And, you know, I've got Dante Pettis and Randall Cobb and Nelson Aguilar and Anthony Miller and Darius Slayton. Like I'm, I'm probably going to take Josh Gordon over those guys. Now the one that is a question, would you rather have Josh Gordon, you got to wait a little bit, come back, get acclimated, or Will Fuller – who you got to wait a little bit. He's injured, but he's with a team that you know his role. Which, which guy would you rather have mm. on waivers between those two? Probably Will Fuller. Not excited about either situation. Man, uh, I'd wait and see what the team is. Yeah, but I don't think you will be able to. Gordon's still coming back from an injury as well. That's something else we didn't mention. But it, it just depends on the fit. There could be a situation where he, he walks in and he's the guy, but – We'll wait and see. We'll we'll find out soon. He should, by all intents and purposes, be figured out by the end of today, by the yes, end of Friday. Yeah, it will happen today. All right, Andy Dalton is being benched. Not only benched, but benched hours before the trade deadline on his birthday. So the Bengals are benching Andy Dalton. They, they spoke to him. They said, basically, it's not you, it's me. We need to see what we've got in Ryan Finley because we're winless. Do you think they they sung it to him like Happy birthday oh. to you? You're benched. Happy birthday to oh, you, no. Finley. Uh, I hope not, but yeah. probably. Cam Newton. This is oh. uh, the news on Cam Newton is not good. Basically, Ian Rapport said that his sprained foot's not getting any better. He's going to see a specialist. I know it's not a lot of news. It's enough for me to think Cam Newton's probably not playing this year. I mean, look, Kyle Allen has been, you know, very serviceable for them, won a lot of games, and Cam's not coming back till he's healthy, and he's not healthy. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. They, they very well might not see Cam. I've been waiting to be vindicated on my My Guy pick of Cam Newton because a healthy Cam would be dominating with this team of wide receivers and Christian McCaffrey, and we didn't get to see it, and I, I agree. I think he very well might be done this whole season. Mike, any anything you want to add? No, I agree. Sucks. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in or out? Um. All right, it's Friday, so we are projecting in or out on a number of players. We'll find out, obviously, uh, about a, a number of these guys heading into Sunday morning. Mike is live, Sunday live, each and every Sunday, an hour before game time, so he'll bring some of that news with him. We've got the Foot Clan game day alerts on Sunday as well at jointhefoot.com. But right now... Decisions to be made, waiver wire pickups, that type of thing. In or out, Case Keenum at Buffalo. I lean out. Please. You're saying please play? Please play. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be good if he's out. He's in the concussion protocol. Uh, Bill Callahan said he could still play this week. So if he passes, he's in. But it, you just you, – there's nothing you we can know. There's no injury uh, prognostication that can be made. If he's cleared, he's in. If he's not, he's out. I lean he's out. Bill Callahan sounds like he's from the Wild West to me. That's what the name. Wild Bill Callahan. I could see that. All, all I can think of is like he's old auto school. parts. Did I? Yeah. James Conner, in or out? He did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. We still are waiting for the practice report from Friday. This is basically what Mike Tomlin projected when he was talking about the injury on Sunday that he's going to miss practice. I lean – in the but the reports coming out of Pittsburgh have not been very positive. Yeah, I I think he's going to play. Sa same with Josh Jacobs with similar injury, missed the whole practice, got a shot in the shoulder played. Now I'm going to throw this out there, Jalen Samuels. Since Benny Snell's out, are you willing to play Jalen yes. Samuels? Yeah. Yes, Jalen Samuels is a, is a is a flex is a good flex play this week. My uh, eight year old yesterday was faced with the tough decision. His first fantasy league: start Larry Fitzgerald on Thursday night or go with Jalen Samuels. Mm. I told him go Jalen. Did he listen? He did. Oh. He did listen. Good boy. <laughs> Josh Jacobs in or out? In. Aaron Jones? In. Adrian Peterson? In. Yeah. Chris Thompson? 
Uh, Never out in. Yeah. Miles Sanders. He was back to full practice, but he'll be in. But Sproles is also practicing again. Does this uh, worry? Because you were Jordan Howard uh, as a good game this week. Does this worry you if Miles Sanders is in and Darren Sproles is in? Not one bit. Okay. No, actually, Great. yesterday I I mentioned I I expected Miles Sanders to play. He'll be back out there. He's getting a very limited amount of rushing attempts. Rex Burkhead? Doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> Devontae Adams. This is a big one. Oh, man, I think he's going to play. He, just watching the video, he's running. He, he looks like he's not hampered. He was. He, I'm going to go out. He I, practiced I lean, in pads. I lean out as well. I think it's going to be one more week, but All obviously right. it's a – this this is an afternoon game, so you have to be prepared. I mean, you have more options. It's not Fair. like a Sunday night or a Monday night game, but just probably make- an easy situation to kind of protect yourself, right? You could probably pick up an MVS or an Allison or a Lazard. Yeah, definitely. Are you willing to take that, Mike? You're confident enough to where you'd roll the dice in that I capacity. Think it, I think I would, and if if Adams plays, you're playing him, right? Yes, that's what I. Yeah, I was okay. going to ask that too. Adam Thielen. <sighs> In or yeah. out? In. I, I think he's in. He, in. You know, there were rumors he was close to playing on that short week last week, uh, another week. I, I He's in. Is he in your lineup? Yeah. Yeah. T.Y. Hilton. This is a rough one, man. We're waiting to see practice reports today. He was a, did not participate yesterday. He was a downgrade from yes. an injury he received practicing uh, to his calf. So th- this is a new injury. I'm going to say the, out. The downgrade is bad news. T.Y. Hilton has been – he's inching his way towards injury-prone label now. Yeah. Over the last two years, a lot of these injuries – Not he's, always missing he's games. Play, yeah, he's either playing through something or these downgrades th- through the week, he's just beating himself the, up. The narrative of like, well, you know, he's healthy now and he's going to be great. You just got to stop doing that. Yeah, I, I think he's going to be out. Odell Beckham Jr., groin injury, limited Wednesday and Thursday. In. 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 Landry. In. in. Julian Edelman, uh, limited Thursday with the chest injury. He'll, he'll in. play. What about Marquise Brown? Hollywood coming back against New England? He's missed a couple weeks uh, because he's limited. Th- this one's tough. I-, I think he's in. They need him. Yeah. They need him bad against New England. DJ Chark, quadricept injury, Wednesday and Thursday limit. In. Didi. In. Out. Deshaun Jackson. Uh, someone he's answer practicing. this for me. Someone answer this. I think he plays. Doug Peterson's optimistic. So here's here's the truth. My answer would be out. But the reason for my answer is pure pessimism. It's just it's just a bad attitude. I just <laughs> you know d- when Deshaun Jackson is on your bench, you're mad at him. But this is because you made an acquisition of Deshaun Jackson. You needed him a week ago. You didn't have him. That's right. And now you and now, are embittered and sad mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. disappointed. I hold grudges. Okay, Sterling Shepard. He returned yeah, to full practice. It, it seems like he's in. The uh, The New York Giants are expecting him to play this week. I haven't seen a full clearance of the concussion protocol alert yet, but everything says he's going to play this he's week. He's a Monday night game, so Darius Slayton could be your alternate if you want to pick him up, fair. if you need to play Shepard. O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait, I think they're both going to miss this week. Oh, I, man. Yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, – O.J. Howard will get one more week of rest. Do you think Bruce Arians just says, that's fine. I don't need uh, <laughs> tight end. But they did. They already brought up a practice squad tight end. So not a good sign. Eric Ebron didn't practice Thursday. He does. I think he's to. in. He never practices. Chris Herndon? Oh, I'm going to say in. I'm going to say this is his. his I'm going to go out. Yeah, the B-hole does not sound optimistic. <sighs> this is just me be, <laughs> that's a, being in a good mood with Chris Herndon. I don't oh. have him on my roster. All right. No more quotes from Adam Gase today on Chris Herndon. All right, Delaney Walker. Out. Yeah. Jimmy uh, Graham. In. All right, game day alerts, as I said. Jointhefoot.com. News and notes always brought to you by Sleeper. We're going to get into the fantasy forecast, but before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, and we're talking about Handy. Look, the holidays are here. You're Mike. darn right they are. Mike's wearing a pair of uh, Nikes today that look like a candy cane. Mm-hmm. If you've ever hosted a holiday get-together, you know a thing or two about, well, it's fun, but it's, it can be chaotic too. Thankfully, there's handy, the easy and convenient way to book home cleanings on your schedule. Here's how it works. In just 60 seconds, Handy will match you with a top-rated pro in your area. Their pros are background-checked. You can compare profiles. You can read customer reviews. You can get your home cleaned anytime from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. 
And uh, you can even choose a weekly, biweekly, or monthly cleaning plan. You can pay securely, add a tip right on the app. And if you're not satisfied, they'll book another pro to make it right. Get your first three-hour cleaning for only $29 when you sign up for a cleaning plan. Go to handy.com slash footballers and enter the promo code footballers. That's a three-hour home cleaning for $29 with a cleaning plan at handy.com slash footballers. Promo code footballers. Terms and conditions apply. Visit Handy's website for more information. Handy, the most reliable name in house cleaning. And we also want to thank Harry's. Harry's makes great razors, great razors at a great price. It's it, Look, humans have been shaving for thousands of years, but the secret to a great shave has not really changed much, and Harry doesn't overcharge to do gimmicky features. I watched some of these commercials of like, they're just outlandish. Look, Harry's bought a German factory that was making phenomenal razors, and and they are, the, the razors are really high quality, but two bucks a blade. And my favorite part, personally, is the the handle, the actual ergonomic weighted handle. It's it's hefty. It fits your hand right. It just makes it makes shaving feel better. You know, you, you when you're shaving your neck, that's the area where it's always the hardest for me. I love the weighted handle. They have made returning to the essentials easy, quality, durable blades. They're, they're just honest business. Listeners can redeem a Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash footballer. You get a weighted ergonomic handle with a with a firm grip, five-blade razor, lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy. So everybody go to harrys.com slash footballer to start shaving better today. They have other stuff too. Like I, I love the Harry's body wash. I, in fact, washed my body... With Harry's this morning. That seems like the right thing to do with the body wash. Yes. Just wash wash the body. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday, we covered the Texans, Jags, Bears, Eagles, Vikings, Chiefs, Redskins, Bills, Colts, Steelers, Jets, Dolphins. Seven matchups remaining. We're going to start right here at the top. The 4-4 Titans... They take on the Carolina Panthers at 4-3. and three. This game's in Carolina. The Panthers are three-and-a-half-point favorites. Andy's almost upset of the week. I like the Ryan Tannehill note we have here in the show, Doc. Two competent games in a row. Good for you. What a high bar for Marcus Mariota that That's would be. That's some pretty good praise, if we're being honest. I like what I'm seeing from Tennessee with Ryan Tannehill captaining the ship, and I did not like what I saw last week. Yes, it was the 49ers, but Kyle Allen had his first real moment in the NFL, and that uh, that's, speaks a lot to a player's confidence. It was the first time he's, he's really turning the ball over consistently. And I think it's going to be a challenge for Kyle Allen going up against this Titans defense. Yes, the game's at home. It's a it's a low over under, 42 and a half points. I think the game will be close. But I like the Titans to upset the Panthers. Let's talk about some fantasy decisions to be made. We don't have to talk about Christian McCaffrey. I can mention to you that he's on pace for 322 rushing attempts. Oh, delightful. Yeah, he is uh, pretty darn good. But... What are you doing with the wide receivers in a low over-under game? The Titans defense is uh, competent. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, been very difficult to predict. Where and are you Curtin, at with these guys? Well, Curtis Samuel, we actually could have even brought him up in the uh, in or out. In or out, because he did not practice again on Friday. Oh, today. Yeah, so I actually think Curtis Samuel will be out. Yeah, I, I saw that he had returned to practice, and then I was like, oh, good, he's 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 back. And now, if he's not practicing today, this is this is a situation where I would expect him to be gone. DJ Moore gets a, a necessary bump up. The last three weeks, eight targets, ten targets, nine targets, and now he becomes the, the clear one versus a 1A, 1B situation. So I, I think if you're looking at wide receivers in this game, right, you wonder, can I, can I keep going with A.J. Brown? I'm I'm doubtful because just his snap percentage. Why isn't he? Tajay the, Sharp is starting. I mean, what is happening? Why is he not on the field more? Corey Davis, you, you're just not sure if you could trust these guys. And this isn't a great matchup, no, like you said. No, no, no. Low, I think it, I'll take the under. Yes, low over under. Two good defenses. Two 
I'll just say mediocre quarterbacks. They're not they're not terrible. Ryan Tannehill and Kylan Allen, they, they've they've shown that they belong starting for these franchises, but they're not inspiring confidence for fantasy. So but DJ Moore to me is you know, if he he's the type of player that can break a tackle and take something to the house. He's got great speed, great yards after catch. So I would be more confident if you're telling me he's gonna get double digit targets. Uh, for fantasy and DJ more than than any other receiving option on both sides of the field. The analysis I will contribute to this is I am playing Jason in the league of record. Oh, don't tell me you have DJ Moore. No. Oh, thank. No, God. I have Curtis Samuel. So now I've yet another injury to my roster. That's all part of the setup, though, because whoever you fill him in with. I do have know. AJ Brown. Though. Oh no. <laughs> so, oh no. If you believe in the Jason curse, I believe in the Jason curse. <laughs> I really do. I, I think that the, the big challenge here for Tennessee is going to be that offensive line versus the Carolina defense that is getting after the quarterback uh, and sacking the quarterback. That's why I like Jonu Smith in this game. I think the underneath drop-down option for Tannehill is going to help him. Uh, Derrick Henry should be able to do some work against Carolina's uh, defense that ranks 28th against the, fantasy, uh, against the running back in terms of fantasy points given up. But outside of, you know, Henry and then Jonu, who, you know, Jason, you have him as your start of the week, confidence is is not really present in this matchup. No, no I, I wouldn't say you can be uh, – confidence present is the running backs and the tight ends. That, that's, that's where I want in this game. In a lower-scoring game, I, you know, you don't expect one team to be just completely rendering the other running back uh, game scripted out. And because there's decent defenses that are – that are more susceptible to tight ends and the landscape. Yeah, I think that's all there is to cover in this game. All right, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Seattle Seahawks. This game's in Seattle. They're five and a half point favorites. The Buccaneers are two and five right now. Se Seahawks are six and two. Look, we know for fantasy purposes, the Tampa Bay offense has given you two elite pass catchers Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Uh, they're both going to be t heavily targeted. But outside of those two guys, I don't think you can touch anybody in this matchup. What do you guys think? On the Tampa Bay side? Correct. I mean, are you confident enough in Jameis Winston yes. on the oh, road? Yes. Yeah, I was going to say. Seattle is allowed the third Are you even legally yards. allowed to say, oh, yes, to, with Jameis Winston? Is that a, is, I, have, I feel like they're going to come in here and arrest you. <laughs> Look, he's going to throw interceptions because that's what he does. And then he'll end up with a perfectly fine fantasy day with – with upside of, what if he actually doesn't turn the ball over three times? Then and you get an extra six points. So yeah, I'm I'm confident in playing Jameis Winston against the Seattle defense. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, last three, week he was actually eight for fifty three on the ground. Did you see that? He he can move when he needs to. Yeah, and he was a top ten option last week, and that was after the horrific beginning and, and against a pretty good uh, defense. Three of his yeah, last Tennessee, right? Yeah. Yeah. Three of his last five performances have been a quarterback one, and now you look at Seattle. I know this is in Seattle. I wish it was in Tampa Bay for, for more confidence in Jameis, but you're talking about five straight weeks that Seattle has given up a top 12 quarterback performance. Their defense just isn't that great, and you know Russell Russell's going to get it done against Tampa, so Jameis is going to have to keep up. He's our quarterback one consensus ranking on the week. Leads the league in passing touchdowns. Russell, not Jameis. Russell, yes. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Chris Carson, you're starting him. Yeah. We we saw the uh, rise from the dead from Rashad Penny last week. He actually had eight carries, 30% of snaps, 55 yards. How many? Meep, meep. 55! Yay! Was that, was that Beaker over yeah, there doing a the, 55? I, he looked like he was passing on, so I was just throwing it in there. Yeah, that was very quiet. <laughs> It's Rashad Penny. It's kind of cute. Like it's, Rashad Penny. It's 55, Mike. It has nothing to do with Rashad Penny. DK Metcalf, two touchdowns last week. That was basically all he did, but he's involved in this offense. Yeah, look, he his red zone targets, I, I'm, I'm doing this from memory. I, I guess I should check our red zone yes. report, right? We just put it up for the Foot Clan. Brand new red zone report. He is, if he's not the number one red zone targets in the league, he is two or three. He's right there. Uh, he's been phenomenal, and this matchup is good. I think you can absolutely start 
DK Metcalf at home here, and and obviously Tyler Lockett is just phenomenal. Yeah, Russell Wilson has a 138.8 quarterback rating when targeting Lockett. Remember last year, what was it, perfect? Yes. When targeting Lockett? Like, that can't happen again. This year, he's, it's the third best for a uh, wide receiver quarterback combo, an 85% catch rate. It just comes down to Tyler Lockett's a really, really good wide receiver, and Russell Wilson's a really, really good quarterback. And, and over the years, they have developed that thing that certain quarterback wide receiver combos have, that mind meld of just you see a broken down play, and they know what to do, and they're in sync. Um, so, you know. They're, is not, Russell ba- they're Wilson, not backstreet boys. Is Russell Wilson your NFL MVP through the first half of the year? Mm. Who I, else would you put in that category? Uh, I, I think it is Russ. Other players in that category. I mean, it's not like Jimmy Garoppolo has been the no, sole no, cause no, 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 of no. that record. And, you know, Mahomes mm. has been hurt. And, I mean, Brady's uh, been Deshaun Watson fine. should be in the conversation for sure. Uh, some people are saying Christian McCaffrey. but Yeah, I think, I think that'd be fair. Lamar, Lamar Jackson? Maybe? Yeah, Lamar, I think he should be in the conversation. But it's, it's Russell. I think it is. I think it is. Anything else yeah. from this game you want to uh, get into? Nope. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I feel like it's really easy and obvious for everybody except DK Metcalf, and we're saying start him. Yeah. The Lions at 3-3-1 three, three, and one take on the Raiders in Oakland. Raiders at 3-4. and four. They are two-point favorites at home. This is a 50-and-a-half point over-under. This seems like, and I'm taking this from the four shows we've done before this this week, our serious show, this seems like the matchup that we're trying to find pieces for. Yes. I, I Both of these teams desperately need a win, and when you look at how their offenses specifically stack up against the opposing defenses, which sometimes can be a trap game, but more often than not is just a fantasy uh, output extravaganza, I would say this is the game – where I expect a high score, I expect both quarterbacks to be good, the passing weapons, and and I would include, obviously, Josh Jacobs. He's my start of the week. I'm very confident because Detroit's running game has been terrible. I love this game. This is, this is the one I'm going to be watching closest this week. Yeah, Detroit's given up 131 rushing yards per game, and Josh Jacobs has looked really good to me. I like Derek Carr. He's the start of the week. Jason, you've got Matthew Stafford as the start of the week. I hope this game, you know, not every – perspective yep. uh shootout comes to fruition but if this is a trap game that's gonna suck yeah because of the confidence that we have in these players where i don't have any confidence is knowing what on earth the lions are going to do with the running back rotation or how often they'll even use the running backs in this matchup there could be clarity because paul perkins was sent back to the practice squad and Trey Carson, where he's most comfortable, sh- sure. But in Trey Carson, tra la la, uh, he is dealing with an injury. He's supposed to practice on Friday, Friday, so today. But you know, that could open things up a little bit for for Smooches and for Ty Johnson, more yeah. more so Ty Johnson. And and I know nobody wants to start Ty Johnson, especially after getting burned last yep. week. But he he still was the snap leader, even though he did not have. The carry lead that was Trey Carson, but he had you know eight percent more snaps than Trey Carson. And if if he's out, you get to those situations where you say, okay, would you start Trey, uh, Ty Johnson or Frank Gore? That's easy. That's Frank, Frank Gore. Gore. But you get a little lower, and you say, would you start Ty Johnson or Miles Sanders? Oof. Obviously, to me, if if Trey Carson, you know, is, is not suited up, I would I would be on the Ty Johnson side. But what even if he after. Is? If he is, then I'm staying away. If okay. if 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 Trey Carson is out there, I think it's a three headed monster, and truly, I think Matt Stafford's gonna say, "Yeah, I don't need you guys. I got I got those guys that are further away from the line of scrimmage. I'm gonna throw them the ball." Almondola is filling that role as well over the last couple of weeks. I don't think it's a coincidence that you lose carry on, and then Amandola's PPR value. I think he's had eight receptions in consecutive weeks. The target counts are in the double digits. He's filling the underneath role, the Golden Tate type of uh, friend to Matthew Stafford. And so he's a PPR flex play to me this week. He's far from a guarantee at the position, mm-hmm. but you could do worse. He is heating up. He is. Although Danny Amendola's heated up a lot. Ooh, in you don't want to get too yeah, hot. He will overheat. He'll break. He down. will overheat. <laughs> but the, doesn't the, he have the health bar? Yes. Yes. Isn't that Danny Amendola? That's Danny Amendola. You don't want to see a big hit because that health bar will go down once it gets to zero. Ooh. He's out of the game. 
Um, it's like Rex Burkett. Burkett has the same yeah, situation. He does. If he's heating up, he takes a couple days off. So, but but the nice thing is, we you know we joke about Danny Amendola's fragility, um, but the reality is. He was injured a couple games ago. He was in the 30% snap counts. Now the last two weeks he's been up in the mid-60s where you know he started the year and obviously he started the year on fire against uh, the Cardinals. So it seems like he's just back to full health. Again, that can change in the blink of a hit. But, uh, yeah, I, I would say Danny Amendola in a full PPR is a, is a good play this week. Tyrell Williams, you can play him. When he plays, he generally scores, and he's certainly their best option. I will say I'm I'm kind of excited to see – what happens with Hunter Renfro over the second half of the year after the breakout performance last week? And you talk about matchups that kind of fit. The Lions are just giving up points to everyone. So uh, Hawkinson, Mike, you're the highest on Hawkinson this week. You think that there's an opportunity here? There's the matchup. To, I mean, the Raiders are 30th against fantasy tight ends. That's, and that's bad. It is. It, it's not the worst. It's close. But it's pretty bad. It's just... I'm with you guys. I want pieces of this game. And yeah, Hawkinson, his floor is is porous, but matchup plus over under. There's a bunch of holes in his floor. Hawkinson. That's what Mike just said. There's Hawk so many holes inside the floor. Hawkinson It's like was, Swiss cheese. Yeah. You ever tried to live on Swiss cheese? That's what I Hawkinson haven't. does. Have you? No. Oh, okay. I was don't do not recommend. I am not a mouse. Um Look, Hawkinson was almost my start of the week. I'm actually pretty confident Oof. in his performance, but I didn't choose him because Hawk strap. The, <laughs> the, the drop in sin that we've seen, you know, I, I think the opportunity is going to be there for him to have a good game. If he could just catch, catch the ball. The ball. Yeah. He is, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, he was actually wearing the, he's jealous of Darren Waller in this game. Uh, he was actually wearing the, the pajamas that Mike oh, wore yesterday. The flippers. So he's trying to catch with the flippers, and that's not easy. No, take him no. off, Hawk. All right, the Browns at two and five take on the Broncos at two and six. Hi, how are you? My name is Brandon Allen. Let me introduce myself. There is a picture of Brandon Allen in our doc. And, and is that from you, Brooks? Did you put look, a picture of Brandon Allen so that we could know that he exists, or it, what? It's, it's Kyle. Yeah, it's to compare his um, quote chicken haircut with Paxton Lynch, another young a Broncos chicken quarterback. haircut. Yeah, that, it's not good. It's, uh, it's it does remind me of Paxton Lynch. Yeah, that's our editor in chief, Kyle. There is there just it's, like a barber in Denver that's doing one cut? Is that what that is? His his <laughs> Come whole on gimmick down to is Clux R Us. Watch <laughs> watch how fast I can finish your hair. Ready? Right? Sit down. <laughs> uh, you're done. Get up and go throw some picks. This is very petty. It yeah, is. that's not We're fair. Being very mean. And, and I blame but Kyle. I have nothing to talk about with his actual f football prowess yet. That's the, the, the truth problem. is, you know, he was drafted a couple years ago. He's been on three different teams in three different years as a practice squad type third of third times the try and yes as they say third <laughs> times the try um you you cannot have confidence in brandon allen now if he comes out and surprises sure but you have to assume he's going to be bad that's what probability says which means it hurts literally every bronco it definitely hurts Cortland sutton now he is himself i think starting to become a beast type of player you you've seen plays where he can just break a tackle and and go so i'm still okay starting him you're holding your breath though. but you're holding your breath doing it i think it hurts the running game as well because if i was the opposing defense i'm gonna say prove it brandon allen without question and vegas has the browns as three and a half point road favorites this game's in denver it's only got a 39 point over under the broncos only have a 17.7 point implied point total and I don't. I see a lot of comparisons here with, you know, Flacco goes out. Here you're facing Brandon. You got Brandon Allen, and what McLaurin's facing if he ends up with Dwayne Haskins in that offense. You certainly can't bank on Sutton. You can't bank on McLaurin with backup quarterbacks. It gets a little scary, and it gets scary for the running backs too. Like you said, they may just hone in on the running game. You've talked about the Browns' defense getting a little healthier over time. They need this game. They need this game. So I, I think the Browns win this game, Mike. Now, I know you're in the same boat. Have, yep. have either of you seen uh, a real update? Or, Brooks, maybe you can look into this. Royce Freeman, I know he left the last game a little bit banged up. And so uh, I'd like to have some information before the end of the show on what his practice situation is. And I'll find out. I know he goosed this past week, but I still am interested in, in having Deshaun Hamilton on my bench with the – with the new quarterback, what? with the with the rookie quarterback, I'm gonna listen because I want to not listen. <laughs> it's just about 
the short throws. It's about the, that Deshaun Hamilton. His he's a he's a great route runner, but he gets open close to the line of scrimmage. And similar to the thinking of like, okay, a tight end is the release valve for a young, inexperienced quarterback. I think Deshaun Hamilton might be able to fill do that you, role. Do you want to put Trey Quinn on your on your bench right now? Because no. Right, and wouldn't I'm that be you, an Jay. identical yeah, situation? You. Like, you know, uh, Haskins comes in. Uh, this, this just, I, I would not want to put those guys in. I, I see what you're saying, but I feel like even if he gets ten targets, he's going to end up with best case would be like seven for forty. Yeah. That's that's the world I see for especially this coming team. off the goose. I just don't. I, I personally disagree with the idea of rostering myself. Um, There's certain players I feel like we love. And we don't know how to quit. Kenya Drake was always that guy. I think Deshaun's Deshaun, on Mike's list. Mike, Mike's got a Deshaun tattoo somewhere. And but he De is a great route runner. And Jason, update, not seeing anything about him missing or being limited. Oh, Royce. Fantastic. Nick Chubb is always in your lineup. Yep. Beckham, you've got to play him. Uh, even though it's been a rough year for Odell Beckham, I think it's, you know he's got to be out, out there on your roster. I, I, I'm going to – I am I'm I get it. He's Odell. He's, to me, gotten to the point where I'm going to consider the options I have on my team. If I've got great options, I would... I what, mean, about, like, what about Deshaun Hamilton? <laughs> yes. Smash play. Um, you know, th this, is, uh, this isn't this is going to be an easy matchup for Odell Beckham. And so, you know, wh what has he done this year that said, yeah, you just must start him? I Look, I know he's super talented and he's got a career that says, yes, you must start him. But at some point in time... You have to be willing to say I, you know, I like my other options better. I'm not talking about like, hey, throw Danny Amendola in there. But Odell Beckham's not going to win you a week anymore with Baker, and in Cleveland, he's not going to do it. That's that's the adjustment you have wow. to make mentally. Yeah, it's 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 gross. And and this was that gross. disagreement, Mike. Uh, I I don't think to, he, I don't think he can win you a week. They give him to label plays him, and to label him, he'll never win you a week the rest of the season. I think is a bit bold but yeah because he can break up in this game this, right this week no it's i mean chris it, harris see a lot of chris harris chris harris is great chris harris jr has been you know really difficult for a lot of players this year beckham is single digits in four of the last five games in the one game where he had 11 targets it was 13 fantasy points yeah i mean uh, oh and and if you remember his his big game in week two was basically one play he just happened to take that whatever it was like a 80 90 yard touchdown yeah. Outside of two weeks this year, he has not been in the top 40 at wide receiver. And now he's Chris Harris? Like, uh, there was a point. You're, we're getting name trapped. We are getting name trapped. And there's a point where you thought you could anchor your wide receiver core in fantasy with him. I'm just saying he's not an anchor. He can be, he's a start, but he's not an anchor. And in Jason, you're saying maybe he's not even a start on certain weeks. On certain weeks, I mean, you've got to have the right roster, right? Because it's it's going to be it's going to be really really tough to bench him and get it wrong. But so keep trade cut Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, trade. trade deadline coming up. Trade trade trade. That's that's my world. I think it's that's not to say that it's not going to get better. I don't expect him to only have you know two out of uh, nine games that percentage good going forward. But you can still trade Odell. His name is as big as it gets. You can still right now trade Odell Beckham to someone for uh, really good options. Rest Ooh. of the season, Robert Woods, Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, gosh. I like posing questions that are difficult. too far down. I think I would – I think, you know, Robert Woods has been disappointing, and so I would stick with the, the big name. I think you can get more. I, you can go what out and trade – Juju? Right. Juju is a great option. I would rather – You'd you rather know, have Juju than Beckham? I think Beckham? at this point I would rather have Juju, but I think you I can think go higher. I would rather have wow. Juju than Beckham. I think you can go out and get someone like Keenan Allen. I, I think uh, – uh, I don't know. No. I don't know about that. I'll, I'll bet you – go try it in your league. <laughs> go, would you, Beta test. Let me just say this. Would you rather have Keenan than Odell? Yes. Yes. Okay, so if you've got Odell, go just make a trade, and you'll probably get it turned down, but there will be leagues where that's accepted because Keenan has been disappointing. People are like, oh, man, he's been disappointing. I can get Odell Beckham? Hell yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is – wow. Well, that was the opponent, man. That's We we throw shade on all your opponents, Foot Clan, all for right. you. I bet they have the same haircut as uh, – <laughs> As, as – uh, Brandon Allen? Yeah. As what's his name? Yeah, as a good old what's his name. Ah, we're so so rude sometimes. Packers 7-1, and one, Chargers 3-5. and five. This game is uh, – it's in Los Angeles. 
You know what? Packers are three and a half point favorites. I'm doubling down this week. Wow. Andy's almost upset of the week. I actually feel really confident in this play. Mm. I, I feel confident in that one. This is a get right game for the Chargers. Ken Wisenhunt's gone. They've been on the, the razor's edge of victory a few times. They got bailed out last week, I know, against Chicago. I think at home against the Packers, I think they can get it done. Uh, I, this is also me thinking Devontae Adams probably not going to be out there. But Aaron Rodgers, he's been great. Ten touchdowns he in has. the last three games. Fantasy and football rejoice. Yeah, he's looked like the real Aaron Rodgers of yesteryear, and it's been it's been great to watch. Aaron Jones, I think, has helped open things up for him, not only just by being a great running back, but having a, a – Another really strong weapon in the receiving game, as as we've seen. I mean, two weeks ago, Aaron Jones had a great week pretty much every week. Two weeks ago was when he dropped that sure wide touchdown, open touchdown, wide yeah. open touchdown. I mean, it, you know, things could be even better for Aaron Jones, who has to be seen as, you know, a top six running back rest of season. Especially this matchup here against the Chargers. Aaron Jones is going to... I, I feast. I like the running backs in both matchups, and I know that Melvin Gordon. You gave confidence last week. Andy is the start of the week. He got a touchdown against the Bears. I actually think he has a pretty good game this week as well. I mean, the the both of these teams have been pretty good against the pass and pretty bad against the run. That's the way that I've seen them on the season. Well, and Green Bay is softening. I mean, over the last month, Green Bay's secondary has allowed the fourth most wide receiver fantasy points. I think Keenan Allen and Mike Williams can have a nice game at home in this one. Phillip Rivers is throwing the ball 38 times a game. I don't know how that changes with Wiz and Hunt's departure, but they're, you know this Green Bay, the way they started the year against the fantasy wide receivers, has not carried on in the last few weeks. And say that the way that Green Bay played against the run, it's true. They, three of the last four weeks, they've actually been very stout and stingy giving up fantasy points to the running back. It, they were just so putrid during the first month of the season that they're – they're ranking. Yeah, it's it's funny they've skewed. they've kind of swung the pendulum. I don't know yeah. if that was a scheme shift because they were getting gashed so much on the ground, but it it could also be a matchup thing. Obviously, last week at Kansas City, uh, you know, Kansas City is just not really utilizing the running backs well. Two two weeks before that was Detroit. Yeah, but Dallas is in this run. Right, Dallas is. Uh, they they did uh, have a good game against Zeke, which was surprising. What do you do now? I I have Hunter Henry as my start of the week. I think you can put him out there. Uh, Jimmy Graham on the other side. Are you playing Jimmy if you have to? If I think you have yeah. to. Yeah, I mean, he's – sure. Jimmy or uh, Darren Fells? Jimmy. I would rather have the targets than the – I mean, both of them have the chance to get a touchdown. Greg I, Olson or Jimmy Graham, Mike? Olson. You like Olson this week? Yeah. I was thinking I might play Fells over Jimmy Graham. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe. But the Greg Olson, Jonu Smith – Obviously, those are our two starts of the week. We play both those guys over Jimmy Graham. Patriots 8-0 taking on the Ravens. This is an exciting game, and it's Sunday night football. Patriots three-point favorites. It's probably something they're not used to. 45-point over-under. Game's in Baltimore. Implied point total of 24 for the Patriots, 21 for the Ravens. Lamar Jackson. A lot of uh, everybody who wants to know, whether it's on social media, what, the questions you guys send us, do you play Lamar Jackson? I mean, can you? Yeah, you. What's the ceiling? What's the floor for him? Uh, you definitely can play him. His his floor is helped by the rushing capabilities, and I realize that the the Patriots are going to be able to scheme the way that other teams have not been able to, and they're going to take away his strengths. That being said, this is coming off of a bye week for Harbaugh, a lot of extra time to prepare for this uh, game, and you know this is a game that is. In Baltimore, I think Lamar Jackson could end up having a really good game. Now, you don't project that because it's, I mean, he's going to throw picks, right? I mean, I think the Patriots, uh, I'll have to I look this up from memory, but I believe they have 17,000 interceptions so far this year. That is... Uh, Give or take one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's from memory. But right. you, I said from memory. You look at Josh Allen this year, right? Every He didn't have... A, his floor has been 20 fantasy points pretty much, except for when he played the Patriots. He was in single digits against the Patriots. Josh Allen can run, not like Lamar Jackson can run, but uh, you know there, there's only so much you can do against Lamar Jackson. He's going to escape, and if that secondary continues to provide limited options, you know he goes one read covered, two read covered, three read covered. Lamar has a backup plan, 
and it's uh his his legs. It's real. It's real. I mean, this is probably the toughest player this this week. He is, and it, yeah, there is a very there is a big divide in fantasy uh in in the industry. People giving their advice. Jason, you're you lean more on. You should play him if you've got him. Yeah, I do lean more on the it's it's he's going to be okay. The more that I've looked into the matchup, um I I I think and he I'm, is an, I'm freaked out. I think he is an otherworldly talent that's being utilized the right way and it's a tough matchup, but that's in every every matchup, you know, well not every matchup. I mean, Dolphins, Bengals, but right. you know, NFL teams are tough. What can you live with as a fantasy owner? That's part of it. You know, I play Matthew Stafford over Lamar Jackson. Oh, me too. But when you get into the Derek Carr category, which I know it's the same matchup, we like him, I like him for the week, a lot. But confidence-wise, do you want to go down with your, you know, number one guy? Right. Or do you want to go down with Derek Carr? Because that doesn't feel so good. Now, if we're talking the freaked out side, Mike, you know, you're 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 on the freaked out side. Everyone right. has been trashed against New England. And and they, for for valid reasons, the pass rush, the secondary, just look unbelievable. Look at the opponents that Lamar Jackson has faced, and you go, okay, he started the year hot because it was Miami and Arizona and Kansas City. But the other three good matchups he's had, Seattle's been trashed, Cincinnati's been trashed, and Cleveland has been you know, the biggest disappointing team right. out there. They played against Pittsburgh three weeks ago, and he was the quarterback 17. So it's like... So that's more what I expect from Lamar Jackson. I think I, it's, you're talking multiple turnovers, Marquise Brown, we were talking about him playing, not practicing again today. Marquise Brown would would really really help if that you actually have a like a super dynamic wide receiver out there that you the defense has to worry about. I I'm telling you, man, I got I have my concerns for Lamar. He's going to run for 80 yards, but what if he throws for a hundred and he turns the ball over three times? Then you're really, really disappointed. What do you do with any of the offensive options for Baltimore? I mean, Marquise Brown means more to Lamar Jackson than he does to your fantasy team this week, right? Because yes. you're not expecting. I mean, the Patriots' defense is historically the best defense through this point in the season that has ever been. Uh, they're number one against quarterback, running back, wide receiver. Oh, but only number two against up. tight end. That's right. We've given up four point six points a game. So even the Mark Andrews confidence, the Mark Ingram confidence. Is, is there any of that, and are you actively pivoting? Like, would you start uh, Jonu Smith over Mark Andrews in this match? I, I would not. I don't think I would. The target share is so high for Mark Andrews. I was going to ask the same question with Jimmy Graham. I mean, the, the difference for pivoting your positional players to your, to, and the quarterback, it's much easier to pivot your quarterback. Like Gardner, Derek Carr, I mean, these guys might be on the waiver wire. But a better option for the running back or the tight end is not available right. on your waiver wire. That's that's the only reason why we're talking about pivoting. All right, the Baltimore defensive line ranks 29th in the league in sack percentage. Tom Brady's going to have an opportunity to sit back there and provide fantasy points to somebody. I know Julian Edelman's in your lineup, but beyond Edelman, you know, Sanu's second game with the team, Philip Dorsett, uh, you know, he needs a play. Dorsett needs to score. So is it Edelman and no one else? In the I, wide receivers? I, correct. I yes, think it's for me. To me, I think it's Edelman and Dorsett. Dorsett has been good enough, you know, enough times. He is looked at, you know, around the end zone. And, and while teams are focused on Julian Edelman and now with the snap count of Muhammad Sanu, I think Philip Dorsett is a guy that I'm not saying you should uh, throw him in. But, I, you know, I've got him in our lineup right now over Terry McLaurin against you, Mike. And you you've already got – what three games with touchdowns from Philip Dorsett and he's the Baltimore Ravens are not the same defense of, of last year I do have an update on Marquise Hollywood Brown he is not practicing Friday correct so oof, that's not good that is not good and I will say this I know it seems did you already mention that Mike I did I apologize it seems counterintuitive um, I'm gonna mention it again <laughs> still not practicing. breaking news still not <laughs> practicing <laughs> um he hasn't practiced today. Old news. Um, but Mark Andrews, if if you don't have Hollywood, the Patriots and there has there there's plenty of fantasy football studies done on them taking away the number one weapon, and Mark Andrews becomes the number one weapon if Marquise Brown is not there. They will scheme Mark Andrews out of this game, and that, so he is who I'm freaked out about. They've managed to scheme all players out of all games <laughs> recently. That's the truth. 
Ah, uh, yes. So it's have. it's terrifying. Uh, Sonny Michelle leading mm. the league in ten zone carries. I'm playing him. You can play him, James White. You can play him. Yep. Uh, outside of that, I think we've exhausted options. Not a lot of utilization from Ben Watson last week. Let's get into Monday Night Football. The Cowboys at four and three take on the Giants two and six. Cowboys seven and a half point favorites. The game does have a forty eight point over under. One of the higher of the weeks. Usually forty eight's about middle of the pack, but there's not a lot of high scoring games. This one looks like it could be a higher scoring affair. Uh, no question marks about your running backs. Zeke, Saquon, you're playing them. Saquon's been more involved in the passing game of late. Eight for 79 and a touchdown on 10 targets last week. And a, just just a Superman Oh, my play. gosh. Three defenders there. He's like, you get out of the way. You get out of the way. And you, I'm going to smash he, you to the ground. He tried to open up the gates of hell yeah. with that stiff arm. And then and then he – Did it did it work? Is this a to that to that player? Like yes. A stranger thing situation. Did he get, did he get put into the, the upside down? Monster. If if you actually watch the play when he pushed that guy into the ground, when the guy got up, there was like a two foot hole <laughs> in the ground. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Uh, did you see them have to fill the the, the, the hole? Dirt, somebody the, ran out and filled in the dirt the in the Cardinal game yesterday. No, they had, they had to play was stopped for like an extra three minutes because there was a huge divot. In the ground. Like a golf <laughs> coming in. Yeah. Sticks in the and hole. then so they brought, brought in a groundsman, and his official technique was put the dirt in there and then punch it a few times. He what? punched the ground? <laughs> yes. That's the official technique. He should've, yeah. They should have had George, yeah! had George I Kittle. I went to college for this. George Kittle could have punched it. Oh, Did you see that the, the hyperextension? And he's, he's oh, punching goodness. the ground. Everybody's yes. worried Kittle's gone, and then he comes out and mans thank, up thank and goodness dominates. he's back. I mean, that was what I have not learned. for the Cardinals. Well, sure. What I have learned is no matter what injury I sustain, how minor, how major, I'm going to the ground. I'm beating the ground like my life is about to end. And then if I'm okay, everyone's like, holy, holy crap. That's You're the, so strong. The, Mike, Paul, the Paul Pierce. That was amazing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Carry me off. That Carry, was, sh yeah. Shady, Shady had that uh, for a long time. The, 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 the Dallas side. Man, do I love the passing attack. I mean... Dak Prescott. How do you not? How do I mean you? You have two of Pro Football Focus's biggest wide receiver cornerback advantages. Um, you know, I talked about my start of the week. Michael Gallup. He's got the fourth best advantage, but he don't have the best advantage on the team. Cooper is above that. I mean, they Cooper match up. is my number one on the week. I don't at I don't the wide blame receiver him. position. He's yeah. he's been phenomenal. Giants allowing the, the most fourth passing yards, thirtieth against fantasy wide receivers. Did you what? say the most fourth passing yards? Yes, he did. Fourth most. <laughs> the most fourth. <laughs> no one has allowed as many fourth performances. <laughs> you know what that Giants. means? That means they give up fourteen yard plays. They give up forty yard plays. The most fifty four yard plays. plays. I love that. The most fourth <laughs> plays of all time. They're the fourthiest. <laughs> They're so fourth. May the fourth be with them. <laughs> All right, so Cooper and Gallup. Jason Gallup's your start of the week. 23.7% target share in his last five games played. Uh, does that mean you like Jason Witten? No. Nope. I mean, it, it, it's not to say any, any week can be a Jason Witten touchdown, but I think that the wide receivers are going to have an, an easier time in this matchup. I don't think Jason Witten is going to – I like Jason Witten in the matchups where he's needed. This one does not appear – like a necessary game. The uh, Golden Tate. Last three games, six plus catches, eighty plus yards. Is he in your lineup? Yes. Uh, I think I think he's lowered expectations, but yes, I'm playing Golden Tate. All right, couple updates for you. Adrian Peterson back at practice today. Just learned that. Jalen Samuels said James Conner missed practice <laughs> today with a shoulder injury. Samuels got all the first team uh, reps. Did he tell him that too? Like, hey guys, hey guys, check this out. The Connor Lions wasn't there. The Lions are bringing in Jay Ajayi for a workout. Oh, everyone, yeah, everyone okay. does this. Um, no, T.Y. Hilton practice today. It's just really today. something to watch. Do you know how much money Jay Ajayi has had to spend on flying around the country? <laughs> they trying gotta to get pay a for it, right? They fly you out oh, there. Oh no way! That's not on his own dime. That's hey. on his own dime, one hundred percent. Hey Jay, look, we'll work you out, but you better figure out how to get here. Oh yeah. come on! <laughs> oh no! I mean, I, I've seen that with with There's you know. There's no way they don't pay him to come out. Documentaries of players that get a get a uh, you know get a tryout. They. I they, want to be honest gotta... with you. I don't believe you. Okay. I look. I'm not saying I. I cannot possibly believe that the billion dollar industry. Yeah, they're gonna say they're gonna call JGI and they're gonna say, "Hey, we got you a flight." Now maybe he flies coach. Oh, he's definitely flying coach. <laughs> Poor guy. 
The Devon- guy for flying coach? No, not for the coach part. For the like. <laughs> oh, woe is me! I wouldn't be caught dead with the commoners or the plebes back then. I yes. was going with the fact he doesn't have a team after all these tryouts. But sure, let's go with coach. Peanuts. No, uh, they don't even do those anymore. I'll take the fillet. Uh, Devonte Adams practiced again on Friday, and then OJ Howard officially out. Oh, fantastic! Officially out. Let's move on. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. Yeah. I'm going to go Hunter Renfro this week. 5,400 smackers. I want a piece of that high over under Raider Lion game. Hunter Renfro with the big play last week. More involved in the offense. I've been waiting for it. I was a little frustrated. I spent about the, the preceding two weeks without Tyrell Williams. I had Hunter Renfro higher in my rankings thinking the breakout was coming. Tyrell comes back and he breaks out with him. But Hunter Renfro at 5,400, that's cheap. And I don't think he's going to be high owned. So I think he's got an opportunity at, at that price and with that matchup and with what Derek Carr is doing right now to give you a game. Yeah, for, for me, I'm looking, you know, I, we've, we've said this every week. Like when I'm doing these DFS lineups, I want to put my money into the known stars that are two-for-ones at running back, which – uh, I think is why all of us have gone with a wide receiver this week. When I'm looking for wide receiver, I want consistency where, hey, they're going to be fine and an upside, and that's John Brown. John Brown has been good pretty much every week, and he has the ability to have a monster over-the-top bomb from uh, Josh Allen in a plus matchup. He's only $6,200. He's been a, he's been the 50th. He's five, five catches <laughs> yes. per game, not the 40th. So, I mean, I think he's just a perfect player for roster construction this week. Mike, I'm going with Marvin Jones. I want in on that action, and he is only $5,700, the matchup against Oakland. Very plus matchup for wide receivers, 50-point over-under, and the possibility of four touchdowns, it actually exists. You're not getting four, but a multi-touchdown game could certainly happen. Don't miss your chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip to hang out with us, see the show, the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series, to enter. It's a weekly contest. Go to FanDuel.com slash ballers. I want to throw one other one out there for people. I will accept. Because we never we never really look at, at defenses, but 4,300 for the Cleveland Browns against, you know. Sure. Uh, it, Brandon Allen. Yeah. That, I, I think that's a cheap way to pivot off of New England. <laughs> you know, the Patriots have been smashing. All right. We want to thank today's uh, studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Evan Ingram signed jersey yesterday. $43. That's mm. cheap. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. They'll get you taken care of. Enjoy the weekend. A reminder, join the foot.com for game day alerts. Mike will be live as well on all the socials on Sunday morning. Have a good weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.